Hi fans and welcome to this WPIL Finals edition of the Woodland Hills Football Network pregame show. Last Friday night the Wolverines traveled to Baldwin to take on Upper St. Clair for the fourth time in two seasons. And for the second straight year it was the Wolverines bouncing the Panthers out of the playoffs in the WPIL semifinals. This week the Wolverines will take on the Central Catholic Vikings at Heinz Field in the WPIL championships. We're going to sit down with Woodland Hills head coach George Novak to review last week's victory over Upper St. Clair, preview this Saturday's game against the Vikings, and we'll also let you see highlights of last Friday's game. All of that and more on the pregame show right here on the Woodland Hills Football Network. The fourth seeded Wolverines entered the WPIAL semifinals with revenge on their minds after losing to top seeded Upper St. Clair in week one. USC was also seeking some revenge after Woodland Hills ousted the Panthers in the 2012 semifinals. For the second straight year, this semifinal matchup between Southeastern Conference foes took place at Baldwin Stadium. Sidecars to either side of Randall. Tompkins stumbles, then gathers his balance, drives his way forward. Repishak pitches. That will go to Kren, and Kren will be strung out and brought down in the backfield, back at the midfield stripe. Randall steps to his left. He will fire downfield, and wide open is Trayvon Mathis, and Trayvon Mathis will go to the house. 80 yards unscathed for a Woodland Hills touchdown. And a kick that will bounce off of the chest of an Upper St. Clair Panther. The ball rolls to the far sideline. Do the Wolverines gather it in before it goes out of bounds? The officials say they do. Repishak, straight drop back. Has lots of time. Now he'll be pressured late, and it's nearly intercepted. Chris David stepped in front of the intended receiver. And Singer can't hang on to the snap. He'll be driven back, and he will be brought down at the 8. Shaw motions from left to right. Hand off Tompkins. No, it's going to be Randall on the keep. And he will squeak into the end zone for the four-yard Wolverine TD. And the snap is fumbled. It's loose on the carpet. And the Wolverines dive on the football. And it is Dante Broadus on the fumble recovery. Jet motion. Sanders takes the handoff from left to right. He'll step forward into open field and driving his way forward inside of the 30 to the 29-yard line. Randall. Not much drop back. Looks to his right, throws to his right. It's complete. Dante Broadus eluding. Panther still on his feet inside of the five and finally brought down at the three-yard line. Handoff. Sanders into the end zone for the Woodland Hills touchdown, and the Wolverines extend their lead to 13 points, 20-7. to seven. Wings to either side. Repichak's going to run to his left. Look for the cutback. Now bouncing it back outside. Beautiful open field tackle by Trayvon Mathis. Repichak in the shotgun. He'll be pressured by Gibson. He'll roll out of that pressure, running to the far side. Jordan Lee will wrap him and sack him and bring him down back at the 32-yard line. Handoff again will go to Makowick. No room this time as he's met in the backfield by Devin Nixon. It'll be a three-yard loss. Again, he'll hand off to Repishak. He'll be met at the line of scrimmage, maybe a gain of a yard before being driven back. Randall's going to run to the right. Has a convoy in front of him. Randall still on his feet, squeaking through a hole. First down yardage is more as he crosses the 40. Randall's going to keep it. First down yardage and more inside of Panther territory to the 40, and they're going to say he's down at the 39-yard line. Bend over and kick will be returned by Trayvon Mathis from the four-yard line as he runs to his right. An ankle tackle momentarily, but Mathis squeaks through one, two, make it four, five. And there goes Trayvon Mathis, and nobody's going to catch him as he will go to the house. 96 yards for a Woodland Hills touchdown. How did he do it? One back set. And a bootleg to the near side, naked style. And Repishak is brought down. Harry Randall carrying it himself to the right side, across the 20 to the 25, still on his feet, and he will be brought down just shy of the first down yard marker. 
Randall's going to keep it, has a hole. Driving his way forward, still on his feet as he crosses the 45. Motion man. Tompkins off of play action. Randall's going to hand off instead to Joel Shaw. Shaw into open field, and he will be brought down as he crosses the 45 to the 48-yard line. Randall's going to hand off, and it's Miles Sanders. First down yardage and more inside of the 40 to the 35 to the 30-yard oh. line, and Miles Sanders still on his feet inside of the 20, 15, still on his feet to the 10, and he'll be brought down at the 5-yard line. Randall's going to run the option left. Randall. Drives his way forward, diving close to the first down flag. Play action, Repeshack running to the near side. He'll be hit and brought down in the backfield. Woodland Hills runs the option to the left. Randall springing through tacklers, still on his feet, close to the first down marker. He'll dive his way to the flag on third and goal. And Mac Pope will be the ball carrier, and Pope will be met at the line of scrimmage and get no further. Repichak hit in the backfield. He will throw it, and it will be batted away by Trayvon Mathis. A goal line stand by the Wolverines, and Woodland Hills has two minutes and 35 seconds to kill, and they could be headed back to Heinz Field. Randall's going to keep it himself. Leaps over a Panther, driving his way to the far boundary, still on his feet, close to the first down marker. With a 28-21 win, Woodland Hills will make their 10th appearance in the WPIAL Finals as they look for their 6th WPIAL Championship. While Harry Randall made an impact and Miles Sanders scored a touchdown after missing three of the last four games with injuries, Trayvon Mathis stole the show by making big plays in all three phases of the game. The Wolverines will take on the second-seeded Central Catholic Vikings at Heinz Field on Saturday at 2 p.m. Hi again, fans, and welcome back to this WPIAL Finals edition of the Woodland Hills Football Network pregame show. Adam Guskey here sitting down with Woodland Hills head coach George Novak. And Coach Novak, before we talk about this week's game against Central Catholic, let's take a look back to last week's victory over Upper St. Clair. You took a huge lead into the locker room. You extended that lead on the opening kickoff of the second half, but the Panthers would not go away. Uh, they're a very good football team, and over the years, they've traditionally been a strong second-half team. And... Uh, you know, they did come back and, you know, I don't know if the, if the kids let up a little bit, but, uh, you know, Upper St. Clair came to play that second half and put up two scores in the third quarter and made it a tight ball game. Coach, talk about that goal line stand. It's going to go down in the annals of Woodland Hills history. Upper St. Clair has been phenomenal in the red zone during the whole time Coach Render was there. You know, when they got the ball down in there, uh, our defense practiced hard all week against it, the plays it they've used against us and uh, you know I give coach Don Frio and the staff a lot of credit and uh, the defense the entire defense played very well uh, you know they had third and goal from the two and fourth and goal from the two and we were able to stop it on both both plays and uh, you know the key play was the fourth and two where uh, they were trying to run a quarterback sweep to the right to the short side of the field and Day Day Osbrooks read it he stunted through the B gap and uh, got through before a guard could get him and made the tackle for a five-yard loss as the quarterback uh, couldn't run the ball, so he just threw it up in despair into the end zone, and Trayvon Mathis knocked it down. We'll get to Trayvon Mathis in a second. He had a terrific football game, but first let's talk about Miles Sanders, his return. A little bit rusty, but he still looked pretty good. Yeah, I think it was an important game for him to get into uh, just to get his feet wet again. And he hadn't played for two and a half games almost four weeks really football time and uh, he came out and uh, you know he's getting getting used to it he really didn't have any live practice all week but he was ready to go and the doctor said he was clear to play and he wanted to play and we used him uh, a lot I thought we used him a lot we wanted him to get in the ball and he did make a great run and in, uh, in the third quarter but it was called back yeah, the majority of that yardage was taken away on that long run. Let's talk about Harry Randall. What's so impressive is he's only thrown four interceptions the whole season, two of them coming this game against Upper St. Clair, but he bounces back so well and doesn't get rattled. Yeah, Harry's a, you know, he, he's a competitive kid. You know, he takes chances running the ball and throwing the ball, and he's always trying to make a play, and uh, sometimes that leads to uh, interceptions. But uh, he's a guy we want to have the football in his hands, and he does a lot of great things with it. 
As promised, let's talk about Trayvon Mathis. What a spectacular football game he had. 80-yard touchdown reception, 96-yard kickoff return for a touchdown, a couple of huge defensive plays to go along with it. The touchdown, uh, you know, was he was the secondary receiver. We were looking out in the flat to, to throw and try to get the first down. He was covered, and uh, Trayvon had beat the corner in the safety deep, and Harry threw a nice pass to him down the field, a 50, 60-yard pass. He caught it and ran it the rest of the way for a touchdown. Talk about that rotation along the defensive line. It seemed pretty effective, even with the Kyra McLean out of the lineup. Chris St. Clair has a great offensive line there. You know, senior-oriented team, both sides of the ball. And uh, they came to play, and they were very tough up front. Uh, at times, they, they were able to run the ball, but we kind of stopped their run game, and they went to the pass game, and were able to move it down. And that set up their two scores in the third quarter. Coach, before we talk about Central Catholic, let's talk about the WPIAL finals. First of all, the challenge of playing on grass for the first time all season long. We've been down there a few times, and that's, that's really not affected the boys that much. You know, it does affect the team with the most speed. You know, Central Catholic has a lot of speed also, so the weather says it might be a little bit wet on Friday and Saturday, so we'll, we'll see how the week pans out. But, uh, you know, whatever the turf, our boys will be ready to play. A year ago, we saw some significant wind at Heinz Field. Now, I know your offense isn't as pass-heavy as it was last season, but Harry Randall has to be aware of the way that wind swirls at Heinz Field as well. It's definitely a, a, a field where the, the wind affects the passing game, and uh, it's going to do it for both teams and also the kicking game. So, you know, we're aware of it, and I'm sure Central is too, but it, it's definitely a factor in the game. Woodland Hills Central Catholic WPIAL Finals, second time in program history. You take on Central Catholic, an old rival from years back, but it's good to see them back uh, on the schedule even though it's postseason. Yeah, they have a great team uh, this year. I have a lot of respect for Coach Totten and his staff. Uh, Coach Fleming's a defensive coordinator, and uh, they've done a great job, you know, just a great job. Offensively, they're a ball control team, big physical team. They went upon it, and, you know, they're in eye formation, and, they run a few other sets, but that's their base offense. They got a big fullback and a big tight end, and senior-oriented offensive line. And they just want to pound it off tackle, counter, trap, wedge. Uh, and they got a quarterback they could throw also. He'll run the ball, but he'll throw the ball. He's going to Florida State. Uh, got some top-notch receivers, one of them being Lynn Swanson. So, you know, it's a big challenge to prepare for them. They don't do a lot of things, but what they do, they do very well. How about the defense of the Vikings? They're very, very good. I think up front, you know, watching them on tape, their defensive front, uh, similar to St. Clair's, but probably faster. And they move around a lot more. And uh, whereas St. Clair was more of a read defense, they're more of an attack defense. They're always putting pressure on the run game and the pass game. Uh, very talented secondary and linebackers are, are big and fast. And the front four got nice size, and they move well. So it's, it's going to be a big challenge for us. Not too many teams have scored a lot of points against them. Talk about the history of this Woodland Hills football team. Ten trips to the WPIL finals since 1996. That's quite an achievement. Yeah, well, we've had a lot of great players come through here, Adam. And, you know, you're being one of them. But we had, you know, over the years, we've had some great kids. And, you know, it's always our goal to make it to Heinz Field and play in the WPL championship game. And, you know, I've had a great staff. Most of them have been with me 15 to 20 years now. And, you know, that's part of the uh, keeping things together, the continuity of the program. They know what we expect. Players know what we expect. And that's one of their goals. And, you know, this year was tough with, with the start we had, but they kept believing and kept working hard each week. And uh, they were able to beat some pretty good teams in the playoffs to get here. Coach, what's it going to take to get the sixth WPIAL title in program history? Well, I think it's going to take a total team effort, you know, offense, defense, special teams. Uh, Central is a very good football team. Uh, Upper St. Clair was a great team. They were ranked number one in the state, and Central's right behind them. So, you know, we're playing some of the top teams in the state, and Central being one of them. Uh, you know, we put together a good game plan. The kids are excited. I think, uh, you know, it, it comes down to a couple plays when you get into these types of games, and, you know, hopefully those couple plays go our way. Does a comfort level help going into the WPIAL championship game? Your team has a lot of experience playing at Heinz Field, so the nerves may not be there as much as the Vikings will have. Central doesn't really have a home field, so they play at a lot of different sites. And uh, just playing across the river there for their home games this year, 
might give a, a good feeling for them because of the openness of the field and the lights and things like that. So, you know, I don't think it'll affect them that much there. They got a lot of big time players that have played other sports and big time games, whether it be basketball or baseball and things like that. So, uh, I expect them to be a very tough opponent. Coach Novak, thanks a lot for your time. Good luck this week against the Vikings. We hope to talk to you again next week from the PIAA playoffs. Thanks, Adam. We'll be right back with more of the pregame show right after this on the Woodland Hills Football Network. Again, fans, we thank you for joining us for this WPIAL Finals edition of the Woodland Hills Football Network pregame show. If you can't make it down to Heinz Field this Saturday afternoon, you can tune in on our flagship radio station, AM 1550 WZUM. As always, we'll have live radio coverage on our website at woodlandhillsfootballnetwork.com. Our radio coverage is also available on the MSA Sports Network at msasports.net. You can tune in to our live cable radio coverage on Monroeville Comcast Cable Channel 13, Penn Hills Comcast Cable Channel 98, and Verizon Fios Channel 37. And stay tuned on all of our television affiliates and our YouTube channel for highlights of this Saturday's game. For everybody at the Woodland Hills Football Network, I'm Adam Gusky, and we hope to see you next week from the first round of the PIAA playoffs. This has been a presentation of the Woodland Hills Football Network. Watch us on YouTube, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and as always, visit us at woodlandhillsfootballnetwork.com.